Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I want to work a little more on my Follow the Heart, which is part of the calendar program that we're working with Susanna from Vintage Blend Studio. Her image has three hearts on it. I've taken the concept of a heart and the words follow your heart and doing my own version in one of my journals. I've got three or four pages empty in my Roxy Journal of Stitchery. Um, I think it was volume one. Uh, I did two journals, so I've got little gaps here and there that I've got space for things in the future. So um, the plan was to have my piece fit here. And this section is a flip out that has a heap of mushrooms on it where I was playing with different concepts of making mushrooms out of fabrics and crocheted elements and then just, you know, couching on mushrooms. So this book has a flip out at the front and the back. It's sort of something now I add to all my journals because it gives you that spot for a landscape image. And in the back, I've got Percy the Peacock. That's a video series I did when I was on holidays. And it was a project that I did while I was on a cruise ship. I had this very old iron-on transfer. We tested it out to see if it actually ironed. And it didn't because of its age. So I sort of had to sketch my Percy in and then just took with me lots of bits and bobs to embroider and create the slow stitch piece. So Percy lives in the back of the journal and then there's a spot here for a piece one day. So I've torn the pen already so if I'm racing out the door and I want to take something to you know stitch I've got the panels already already sorted and they're pinned into position which I sort of tend to do and that way it's ready to go so let me just pin this back in getting sidetracked yep and there's one here so um, there's one here that was a Ann Brooks sewing kit like a needle book so all the fabrics came from Anne and then I embellished it with my bits and bobs and um, then did a breakdown of it with the scraps that were left that was less and I found a, a rose that suited the original. So I sort of did a heavily embroidered and a not so heavily embroidered. What else have I got here? Oh, Scrappy Heart, Scrappy Butterfly built into a background. So they, they're series within my videos and then um, like with the dragonflies, I like to have lots of little made elements at my fingertips for future projects. So, and these were two of them. And I just went a little bit further and like seed stitched pink in it to blend it with the background after all the seed stitching that went into this one. Oh my goodness, like the memories. Gosh. And then we've got little Owl. Now he came out of a Trish Burr embroidery transfer book where you get lots of images that you can work on. So I increased him in size, nestled him in here, and then embellished accordingly. So the plan was this piece would sit, I just loosen that off a little bit, would sit here next to Owl. So I sort of want him complementary to the Owl. Which brings me sort of to the next few decisions, I think. Now this page has a lace trim on it from the, the mushrooms. So it works out well that I could keep my tab. So I've just stitched it all down with invisible stitch. I haven't done any additional stitch. I'm sort of trying to keep it a little bit simple, but I think I'm about to expand out the bottom part of the heart, which I'm okay with because the top is simple. So that'll be stitched into there. That'll fit really well. And you'll get the peekaboo of that lace from the mushroom piece coming through the side. So really happy with that. That was like a, a nice little bonus. Another thing you can do is if you're putting your piece into a journal and you want to add more, you can always tuck more lace through here when you're in the process of stitching them in. So you can build a page's 
build your pages out is what I'm trying to say. So where we're at, I've stitched my words, I've stitched everything down and my heart is complete. So I've fabric painted, not fabric painted, stitched all of the roses. So thread painted. So some of the roses were quite heavily stitched a little bit looser here. I left the gaps to just get a little bit of light and air in there. This one got very gappy, which I thought was just beautiful. The artist before me that printed this fabric had just put a hint of pink through these areas and I thought that was very clever. Um, I've left little pockets of the paint coming from behind just to give me another color without finding another color. And then down the bottom here, my last flower I stitched here. I've sort of got the, the opportunity where the heart comes into no man's land here. It was sort of a bit of a abstract heart drawn within the heart, if that makes sense. This was a little bit thicker and I've trimmed it back. It just didn't quite look right. So in, in doing that, it's made my heart a little bit more small, -er, which I'm really liking. I think it's a little bit more petite. So the next thing is to, first of all, find some blue thread for me to continue stitching. And the other thing I wanna do, I'm just going to get a little container so I can drop my bits and bobs into. Let's get this blue thread out of the way. Let's, but I have a feeling it's going to be, I might get the whole book out of the way. Just start layering things up and before you know it, you've got yourself in a hang of a mess, don't you? I have a feeling that that might be more gray than blue. So it's fun. Blue's funny. Sometimes I look at it and I think, oh, that's definitely blue. But then when I go hunting for threads, okay, so that's a bluey green. That might work, you know. And I want to do a bit of stitching on the leaves. And these two colors. I had in my little tray here when we first put it together and I'm still thinking that that's okay that's good so I did pick my blues is that the same color might be too similar okay so I'm good I've got some threads already I might need another green yeah I did have some pick oh gosh I've already done it this is what happens when you put a piece down for a little while yeah, so those greens will work, the blues will work, so the heart will be sorted. And then it'll be just stitched into position. The other thing I want to do with you guys is have a think about what we do at the bottom of the heart. I sort of want to drift something along here. And it's going to be tilted so that the Eiffel Tower that's just in the background there is at a angle that it is standing upright was my final decision. I was a bit miserly too. I got in here and I cut out a little bit of that. Um, probably could have cut out more. I just pinched a little bit of that tatting off and then I was like, no, leave it be, leave it be. So anyway, what I want to do is explore this fabric. Now this is fabric I've used before and fussy cut images out of and it popped into mind as maybe being a nice way of doing a three-dimensional combination of flowers here. I also, late last night, before I went to bed, I came in here and grabbed a couple cut out laces to see if they had potential. So there's an opportunity to do something with this as well. So that's where I'm at. I think first of all, I'm gonna fussy cut out some flowers. This, let me just start again. This fabric I got from um, a retreat. It was part of the kit and it just came up beautifully fussy cut out. So I thought, well, I'm gonna grab some more from my stash because I have a feeling it'll pop up again in future projects. So I went hunting, it took me ages to find it and I finally found some and got a half a meter of it 
So for those of you who it catches your eye, it's a Devon Stone print. It was part of a series of a couple years ago. And you can't really read the name there, but I've been staring at it and I think I've got it. Flower Festival. I think that's a F-E-S-T-I-V-A-L. It's sort of chopped off on that selvage. So Flower Festival. If this catches your eye. And um, yeah, there was quite a few in the range. So if that's something you think you could add to your stash. I really, really like the flowers in it. So I'm going to, I did have some fussy cut out. Whoops, there goes the big scissors. Yeah, I did have some fussy cut out in a little cellophane bag, but they're not here with me. So I'm going to grab a couple more. Now I'm going to this time, I don't really want to stitch them down too much. I want them to be quite loose because my heart is quite thick. It's raised up in the air due to the wadding. So I can't really stitch, stitch the edges down as much as I would normally. But that's okay because this is just another different way of collaging. I might leave that little leaf. We can always remove him if he doesn't look right if I had my pieces that I had already fussy cut, we would not be sitting here watching me fussy cut, but that's all good. Pull up a chair, grab your work, grab a couple biscuits, and let's get busy. I was going to stitch the blue flowers and the leaves last night, but I just got so tired. I was at it all day stitching the roses on and off like I was doing chores and then get back and sit back down and do a bit more stitching and then the light disappeared on me so I was under the light of the you know you switch your lights on in the evening it's just not as good as daylight and I noticed my eyes had got quite tired so I thought no nah, I won't do the leaves <clears throat> I won't do the leaves and the blue flowers. I'll come back in here in the morning and film selecting the cottons, which I had already actually done. But um, I won't do anything fancy with the stitches. I'll just paint them in with needle and thread. Just highlight here and there. I think they'll come up really well. So that's the plan is to nestle little flowers in amongst it. So let's, let's grab another one. So we've kept it quite sparse at the top. A little butterfly. We're gonna have to save him. But as we get to the bottom, I think we can be a little bit more <clears throat> Playful. It's only a little space, so it's not going to overpower the piece, I don't think. It's sort of down that final edge, that last little bit of room. So I think it'll work out well. And we've done a complementary colour tone to the owl. He's more, I guess, muted. And this one is sort of a little bit more punchier. So I'm happy with that. The only thing is that blue doesn't really appear anywhere, but, you know, it's worked out well as a tab. So it doesn't matter, I don't think. It sort of draws your eye to it because it doesn't blend that tab there. And it'll help me turn that page. So it's just all about placing... The little elements now i think there's a third where this flower here it's a great piece of fabric i'm always looking for florals that can be fussy cut because often um, we're looking for little bits and bobs to build a display 
these types of fabrics are really good. I'd never seen it before. It had certainly got under my radar, but I'm not always in quilt shops anyway to see new collections. I have to rely a lot on social media. If they've got Facebook pages and that, well, then I, I tend to, you know, see a new range of fabrics. And everyone's very much into the Tilda fabrics, so the moment that's all I seem to be getting notifications on so I need to go hunting for some new new shops in Australia and join their Facebook page and then whenever new collections come in that are maybe a little bit left afield for me it doesn't hurt to sort of see them the problem with going looking is I might find something <laughs> It's best I probably don't look. I try where I can to find prints in op shops, you know, fabric from clothing. But gosh, it's getting hard. It's a real, real scramble, I think. I know I did that op shop run and found nothing and visited three stores. And I had quite a few messages from people who are assisting in op shops and they have noticed a definite change like in the way that they're instructed to price so it's not our imagination they are getting more and more expensive well they're going into more and more expensive sites like their leases they're picking some pretty major roads here in Brisbane and I'm pretty familiar with the cost of renting buildings with my own business. So when I see them pop up on thoroughfares, and I know darn well that I can't afford to go in there because I know the price of those buildings, yet you see some of these national big opportunity stores or thrift stores, you call them overseas, going into those spaces. And I think, wow. Obviously, a $3 dress is not going to cut it, so now it's a $12 dress. Which is a bit of a shame, but it's the way of the world, isn't it? It's the way of the world. There we go, there's another element. I think from memory, that's the three, bar of white flower. Yeah, that's lovely. I'll just bring that up a little bit. I think I could probably add another one of those. I really like the little green leaf. Let's cut him out. And we might grab that white flower. It doesn't hurt to have single units in amongst it as well. But I'm thinking I like more of the pink. Okay, so let's let's fussy cut this guy out. Now you've got a couple options with treating your fabric before you proceed. You could run a very small bead of glue around the edge of it all. And that just keeps it from fraying, especially if it's dimensional like this and you're not stitching it down. My preferred glue that I have the most success with is art glitter glue. And I find that because it has that narrow little nib, it's a very fine point, makes it really easy to apply it. And that's probably the main reason. That little leaf there has caught my eye. Maybe we can add that in. Now, if you're stitching around it all, um, you don't have such a an issue because you're catching all of those. Yeah, I like that. You're catching all of the um, threads. That's what I'm trying to say. It's just thinking. My mind drifted for a moment about how I proceed. Do I take a photo of it? Do I 
I can't really stitch anything down yet because I've got to finish those that embroidery in there. So it might be one of those videos where we get it to a certain point and then I have to stop and um, go and do that and come back and then carry on. We'll see how we go. I want to get into this and I haven't finished that. Shocking. So we've got this little guy. So where are we going to put him? No, he's too similar. I don't mind him up there. Sort of balances the, a little bit. We could be... Sort of feel like if I put one up there, I'd need to keep going. And then it's going to get out of hand. Oh, goodness me. See what happens. Do we cut another? We're going to cut another one. We'll just, we'll just put one there and have a think about it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's such a pretty fabric. I wish I had seen the whole range. Great little flowers. And then once I get this art glitter glue onto the back of them to stabilize them, we'll call it stabilizing them. Um, <clears throat> I'll then anchor them down with a few stitches and then go into each flower and see what I can do to embellish. Now it won't be as full on as that type of embroidery, but it'll be an opportunity to put beads, French knots, just random little lacy bits just sort of to work them a little bit more three-dimensional. Okay, so my thoughts are as we could drift it up there. But I think I need to think about it. That's the piece. So then I think I need something else up here. It sort of swishes it up, doesn't it? Let's get this little favourite out again. <clears throat> this little guy, the dark pink. Even the butterfly and the bee. We'll visit them in a minute. Just depends on the extent of the piece, doesn't it? How far we go with it. It's turning into a massive garden. Someone's put fertilizer on all these. They've exploded. Oh, I had my first nasty comment. Not that it's in my head, but it must be a bit because it's still in my mind. I can't remember the exact words, but pretty much I talk too much. I flick fabric around too much. I'm out of here. Bye-bye. <laughs> yes, you're on the wrong channel if you don't like Yibby Yabba. I think that was the gist of it. I might put this guy down into here. Might even bring him onto the heart. There, that's what I'm going to do. And I'll put him up here where he can pop a little bit more. <clears throat> yeah, that's it. So much for just being down here. So where are the butterflies? We've got this little guy left. Let's, let's cut him out and see if he complements the piece or, or not. Is he saying I yibber yabber too much? See, it's in my head. I should forget about it. I get the odd one that um, picks me up on technical things to do with the actual project that I'm doing. 
But I don't mind those at all. Not at all, because I probably am wrong. So if someone says, you know, you should be threading your needle to the left, not the right, well, that's fine. I, I do not take them as a criticism at all because, you know, you guys aren't sitting here with me and if we were all in the one room, we'd be getting tips and hints from everyone in the room. Like, that's just the way it is. That's crafting. So they don't worry me. But when people attack people and mine wasn't even that bad but I've seen others get attacked on social media well not social media YouTube and they make it personal like they might comment on their hands or you know just random stuff people say or even the tone of their voice or their accent or pronunciation of words oh I like you ah yeah you're going there mate yeah so yeah that really irks me and mine wasn't to that severeness but um if you don't like it just keep moving i never understood that you see it on facebook all the time don't you someone will post something and then there's this all these people pile on and it's like have some dignity you know just keep your trap shut there we go hasn't that got out of hand Goodness me, how I do this. Now, what I might do is do the gluing, I think. I did have this as well. I thought maybe some little elements of this, but I don't think I need it. Yeah, I don't think I need it, guys. <clears throat> Before I went to bed, it was all going to be white lace, but then... When I got up this morning and looked at it, I'm thinking, no, you need to be a little bit more special. So all I'm going to do is this is just all about protecting those edges with my art glitter glue. It doesn't have to go around the whole thing, but just a few bits here and there. <clears throat> Excuse me, if you like that frayed look, you probably wouldn't want to do this. That's fine. I've done that as well. If you're going to stitch it down. Now, I'll just let that dry because I want it three-dimensional. <clears throat> Excuse me. My instinct was to actually place it down. <clears throat> oh, goodness me. You could iron these onto some iron-on interfacing. That would certainly protect the edges. But um, I don't think I need to get all that palaver going. Just a little bit of well-placed glue will just protect it a little bit. I can hear a blooming fly in here. Oh, the summer... With all this rain we've been having in Queensland and the grass is just growing and everything looks green and beautiful, but with it comes bugs. It's like the flies of society have exploded. You go outside and go for a walk and you're just covered in them. I was up at my father's farm and I saw that sort of the grass heaven. It was just thick with them. Just thick with them. And the other animal that's really exploded is mozzies. I, seriously, I, go, I change my dog's water every day. And in the morning when I freshen it up for them, um, it's full of mozzie wrigglers from the night before. It's unbelievable how quick those things reproduce. So you sort of have to chuck it all out because then you're not encouraging more mozzies. Oh boy, the tenacity of some of these little animals. I was down the back of the block um, sitting. See, I'm rattling on, so those folks would have left. I was sitting down the back of the block with Pepper and Bandit having a cuddle and a bit of a walk with them, getting them to show me what they've all been up to. 
and um, the March flies. I noticed one land on pepper and I thought, oh my gosh, they're out as well. Next minute, bang, I felt it on my leg. It was another March fly. Oh gosh, it was huge. And then um, as I was walking back up, another one got me on the back of the shoulder through my clothes. I felt this almighty sting. There was another March fly. So it's just like the weather, the warm weather, the rain has brought all of these little guys out. So I haven't got a photo of what I did there, but I'll have a look back at the video. So what I'll do is I'll finish I'll finish that stitching in the heart so then he's done. I'll stitch him into position. Then I'll reposition these flowers and um, pop a couple little invisible stitches into the center. And then um, we can have a look at what decorative things we can do to embellish them. It might be something like we focus just on just on the center of them. That'll bring some yellow <clears throat> into the piece. So I think I've got enough pink. So it'd be nice to bring a bit of other, other colors. So that's all of the little elements with a little touch of glue on their edge just to help with that fraying. Stop this video, go and do that bit of stitching and I'll come back in an hour or so I'm at home by myself today, so no interruptions, and I plan a big day of stitching and videoing. Get the washing done in the middle of it all would be really good. Okay, so they can just dry. Art glitter glue um, dries extremely quickly. Uh, it's pretty much PVA glue, and then they put this magic elixir in there that makes it dry instantly. So um all right i'm gonna pause the video i'll toddle off and finish my heart and i'll probably stitch it onto there and then um come back with these positioned and stitched it down and then we can dig out some threads and drop a few french knots and some random things in them as well all right excellent Okay, guys, look after yourself. No, don't, I'm not saying goodbye. Sorry, I'm so used to saying that. Um, I'll see you in a second. Bye. Okay, I'm back. I have finished stitching the green leaves and those little blue flowers. And there's a few little blue buds that pop up out, up the side here. I'll zoom in so you can have a quick little look at all that embroidery. You can see the little blue blue flowers. I've also stitched the actual heart down. So the background, what I class as the background, is done and the feature element, you know, is all in position. So I then had a quick look at the video that we just did to get the position of the flowers. It's slightly different but pretty much the same. The glue has dried on all of those. So now what I'm going to do is stitch them down with a couple little invisible stitches in their their position the only thing i want to just double check remember i mentioned at the beginning of the video last night when i placed this out ready in the morning to film i had grabbed this well in amongst it was lying this and i just sort of wondered if i should put a little bit of extra texture on it I had thought maybe a swish of of this through so I think what we'll do is I know where I can stitch down and not worry about texture and that's this side that is pretty much going to be stitched there those are the ones in question at the top here, really happy with this. 
So the butterfly is going to be anchored there. This little guy, so it fits in with that. It's funny how these pieces come together. You think, oh, where am I heading with this? I feel like I've lost my way or have no great direction yet. And then you sort of just walk away, come back, and it just sort of all comes together. So that one there, I decided I was going to have him peek up over the heart and the one behind under the heart. So it sort of feels a bit dimensional. And those two, I'll fiddle with in a moment. So I'm just going to start up here at this butterfly, I think. Then what we'll do, or what I'll do, is have a look at what I can stitch then from this point. And like I said just before, um, it'll be highlight stitching. It won't be as, in, as intense and dense as that because this we're sort of onto a whole new element. So this butterfly, for example, black thread around it, some antennae, that would be what I'd do for him. So we'll see how we go for time. I think I've only got half an hour or so left. So it might be a case of we come back next time and I've got a bit of um, bits and pieces pulled out. So I'll need to go hunting for some threads and beads and, you know, elements that we can use. So if I can get this stitch down, I will be a happy girl. And then in the next video, we'll drag out beads and bobs and so that should be secure and it's just a tiny little stitch but then underneath I can kind of jump down into here now as I said before I don't want to stitch the edges of this down I want it to feel quite dimensional 3d and that means my stitching must be in the centers only and not and not around the edge being in a journal too it's really good because it'll not be touched as if it would be on you know even a wall hanging can be a bit a bit um, touched and textured feeling <laughs> you know when you watch people come up to your work and the hands just go all over it and you just hold your breath that you've got your stitches right to hold it all in yeah I think this will pretty it's a very pretty page for the start of my journal too so I'm absolutely chuffed with it now I, I didn't like it at first I really didn't know where I was heading and took a bit to settle in and find its space it does happen was it writer's block is that the word they use when people are writing novels sometimes it just takes time that's the beauty of slow stitch because I needed that time to stitch to get my head around where we were heading with it I have covered up a lot of my ticking but I'm okay with that that's another another thing of slow stitch isn't it you put layers upon layers but it does help your piece start to get really interesting when you do you sort of have to let go at times now this little guy I'm going to place a stitch that catches him up and over that heart now oh, that has to have French knots in the center of it look at it it's like got a little yellow stamen cluster even turkey work uh, you know all the classic stitches the good old favorites I think by having the title to follow your heart is a good title for the journal because it really has been a journey and the fact that I the whole Roxy journal stitchery the starting of my channel which then led to finding other artists and then of course the trip to Paris where I met um, Susanna 
and it was just, I don't know, it's follow your heart. It really feels appropriate. And out of it, out of it, I've got myself a very good friend in young Susanna. We've become pretty close. So love you heaps, girl. You're a good chick. So this piece is just, I think, lovely to have. Oh, now I've lost those flowers. Lovely to have in, in my journal. So those little guys are caught at the top there. I love how they get that bowly shape. Like, oh. Let's get this little guy into position next. I don't think I'm going to stitch him up onto the heart. I think I'm just going to let him nestle there. I think he'll want to sit that way anyway because there's little buds in behind here. Yeah. Question is, do I throw a few stitches out on that green leaf? Yeah, I might. Just to hold that. It's really about manipulating your fabrics to sit where you exactly want them and those little stitches to do that are crucial. Yeah, that's good. That's just going to help it from not twizzling around. Okay. He's not going anywhere. We are down to this guy. Same thing, I don't want to come too close up onto that rose. I guess too, I need to just hold the horses a second and make sure I can get that texture in that I want to. So I'm just going to pop firstly a stitch there. Just to make sure it all cooperates. Okay. I feel like I need a lot of lemon colours actually. Not too bright on those centres. I'm just glancing at the centres of these flowers and feeling like lemon is the colour of the palette. Okay, I'm going to end that off because if I keep going, I'll lose an opportunity to slide a little bit of this crocheting in. Come on, just a simple knot's all we need, for goodness sakes. I've unthreaded now, I just got a the old fashioned way of doing a knot. Okay, enough mucking around with that girl. Now, let's get rid of that pin. Let's see. We won't be using that, it's just not, not needed. We sort of need a wedgy triangle, don't we? And it's just to add a bit of interest as it flares off that side. How was I going to position this? Something like that. Okay. So let's... Do we need it to go higher? No, we'll keep it on that border. We won't kick it up here. We'll keep a lineal line happening there. All right. Let's just chop into it. Isn't it the most glorious thing? If you ever see a finely crocheted something or other, grab it because it's knitting, it's it's background, it's oh, it's just been the gift that keeps giving. Now, let's tuck that in there and let's try and get it to peek out over there I think that'll 
make it feel like it's meant to be. There we go. Now this little chap, I think down there. Let's get up here. And then we might pop a few stitches up into the heart for him. Now this little guy, who are we covering? We don't want to cover that, but we can come down a little bit there. And this maybe goes over the top. Yeah, that's better. I don't know if that's how we had it originally, but it's all good. We're finding our own way now with it. I sort of feel like I'm covering that bud. Let's just twizzle that a little. Maybe we put that under. Yeah. Yep. That little guy disappears underneath. That little guy stands up. He stands up. He comes down. And there's our netting coming across there to finish that base. Okay. Love it. Oh, I can't believe we've saved this piece. Oh, I was so close to putting the background. When I did all that camphor stitching, um, or Boro um, running stitch, um, I just, and I, this was a separate element, I just felt like I wasn't heading anywhere with it. And I put so much time into that. And I'm like, don't cover it. But I'm okay with it now. I feel like it's still there, even though it's all the way underneath all that. And I guess some of you would be thinking, gosh, it's gone forever, all of that. But I'm okay with that now. I don't know. Maybe it's a case of I needed to admire it for a bit and then I was ready to move on and embellish a little more. It's like I was cautious. Yeah, that's what it was. I was cautious on the embellishing side of things because I put so much into that piece at the back. I think that's what was my, I guess my um, block in this piece. And then time has allowed the piece to evolve. Does that make sense? Gosh, now we're getting deep. Stitching is a bit that way, I think, especially slow stitching. You get time to think and really look into what the artist has done on a particular fabric that you may be working. Or let's say you're usually using natural dyed fabrics. It gives your mind a moment to have a really good look at where the ink laid. Yeah, it's quite interesting. Now we're going to pop up little stitch there we want that little that looks like it's going to fray too I'm going to pop a little bit of glue there and give him a little extra support be ashamed to lose that little fellow as fabric disintegrates and because it's a pointy little leaf the last thing we want is disintegrating fabric. And because I'm stitching into there, that's sort of put a little bit of pressure on that point. It's all good, we got him sorted now. I might do the same with that leaf. May as well, because it's a cut angle, you think it was secure, but sometimes the fabric's loosely woven. Even just a, a cut like that can just fall to bits. Okay. Now let's work up to this little flower and decide how we're going to anchor him. I think I'll put a stitch up here. Just 
the one and then one at the base and that'll really hold it maybe one there so the question will be is how much will I embellish will I get out of hand and start stitching pink I'd like to think I don't but <laughs> Oh, these slow stitch pieces, don't they just suck you in like, oh. Now that leaf, I think I'm going to leave it in the air like that. I sort of like that three dimensional, but I'm going to reinforce him again just in case. It does feel pretty good actually. I must have got a little bit of glue there. That's good. Okay, to me that feels pretty good. Is that secure there? Yep. So what I might do with this leftover thread is just head out to this perimeter. Let's have a little look at this leaf. And I guess we probably should re revisit all the leaves. I don't want this one to glue down. I want him to be in the air. A little bit of glue on that and we might dodge up to the top here spin the piece around and just revisit them I'm just going to with my leftover thread pop a few stitches out here I won't pull them because my piece is going to disintegrate if I keep pulling more threads off that's the background piece I'm referring to there Okay. And down we go. So that's anchored. All right. So we can get rid of that pin. Let's have a look. We need to anchor through there. Let's thread up. I'm happy I put that in. I think that's really helped pull the piece together through. Mm. Happy, happy. Okay, so what I might do is start back here. Grab that little bit of lace there. Working our way across. I had recommended to me a series that I'm hoping to watch tonight, Bad Sisters. I just Googled it before I sat down and stitched those uh, leaves and it's on Apple TV so I'm gonna go and check it out it's like a they call it a dark comedy suspense thriller so <laughs> I don't know what these girls get up to sometimes recommendations are good sometimes Gives you an insight to the person that recommended them. <laughs> but we'll, we'll give it a go. I think I said in the video, at the beginning of this video, I'm with by myself for a few days. Gaz is up at the other house tending to trades. And, um, yeah, I can watch whatever I want. So if there's anyone out there that's got a good movie to recommend for a girl by herself, I don't mind this, the odd scary movie. It's, you know, keeps you alive. Makes you aware if you don't run back into the house when you clearly know there's a 
guy in there that's being crazy with an axe. You know, those types of movies and the idiots run back in. If you get to the footpath, why would you go back in? So, yeah, it pays to watch the odd movie like that because then you learn tricks. <laughs> Don't go back in. So I'm just going to, I might actually allow this one to sit down. Yep. This little guy, he's behind. There's no way he is going to get up onto the heart. And I'm like, okay with that. So they can have that little bit of glue just to help stabilize him and sit, sit down there. This little guy, he feels pretty stable. We must have really got him, but we'll just tack him there. Same with this little guy. And that little guy won't hurt. They're so delicate. It will not hurt. Okay. So there you go. There's my piece. So now it'll be a case of finding colours and threads that complement the centre of this piece. And um, some beads. Yeah, love it. Love it, love it, love it. All right, guys, I'll bring it up to the camera so you can get a closer look if you did decide to find that fabric and how those little elements can be pieced together. Doesn't that crochet ring help a lot? It really helps bring it together. Where's my journal? Let's see how it sits. Get the needle out of the way. go oh, love it love it yep perfect I love that edge too let me just come up a little bit that edge there that folded edge just helps add a little bit more um, interest to the page I was playing around with this tatting too but it sort of became too pink and I thought no not this time and the other piece that I spotted was this the flower didn't work because it was bringing in copper but I did like that it just sort of worked Look, here she goes again no just that's enough that's enough I think once I Play with some stitches in all the centers of these flowers I think um, it'll be it'll be perfect okay guys I will leave you alone and I'm off to I don't know what I'll do for the rest of the day who knows I should do some housework yeah I don't think so all right guys look after yourselves and I'll catch you in the next video bye